you right now, we have 38 students that have passed uh, some aspect to be college ready. We have five students that are career ready. Now, the reason for the five is because they haven't taken the COSA exam yet. They don't take that till March. Uh, we expect, we hope to at least double, uh, March of those will hopefully triple it, um, at least double what our index is right now. And right now, we're at about 30.9 for our index, which is about where we were this time last year. So we're hoping to get to that 75. Um, the other thing is just to kind of make you aware, uh, as far as program review, program review has been added this year for the first time uh, to be a part of your accountability index. Uh, program review deals with arts and humanities, practical living career studies, and also writing. Okay? Uh, the writing portfolio has been removed. It's been removed for a few years, but they've kind of added in the writing program review. Just to kind of let you know where we are, for our progress, last year if they would have scored us, we would have scored an, uh, an 84.17, which would have increased, which would have helped our index overall, which would probably increase our index probably another five or six points. So it's very, very possible for us to increase using the program review. Um, our goal is 97.8, but I've talked to my staff members, it's very possible for us to get 100 on this index. And, the, and 100 is as you can. And uh, the reason for that is the process that we're implementing is to take care of the program review. Um, one of the things that's been very helpful is Ms. Kirk has also met with different people in, throughout the district that are taking the leads on program review, and we're kind of getting all on board and pointing our arrows in the same direction as the district uh, with Ms. Kirk's lead on that. But if you look on the next, the very last page, just to kind of show you how involved this is, each program review is divided into four sections. You can get three points on each section, which is 12 points per section for a total of 36 points. You have to get 24 points to get a perfect 100 on the index. Now, what I've done is if you, you can see each of the demonstrators, for example, at the very top, you have student access. Ms. Nygaard is one of my science teachers. She is responsible for collecting all the data that deals with student access in our humanities. Every teacher in my building, every administrator, including myself, we have a demonstrator that we are responsible for. Instead of just saying, you know, Ms. Moore, you're the art teacher, you're, you're responsible for all the arts and humanities. We divide it up among all of our teachers. We've also used our schedule to an advantage. We found, uh, I've set aside groups, for example, everybody in the seventh period, we're going to take seventh period each day. Those teachers have planned in seventh period, or are, are able to meet seventh period, and they're going to meet just on program review one time a week. So this is something that if we don't if we don't get above, I'll, I'll, I'll go on record saying this, if we don't get above 90, it's our own fault. Because this is something that we can work towards, for example, just by informing you about program review tonight, that helps our index because I'm getting the word out to stakeholders. Uh, also, if you look in the newsletter, we've also included where we're getting words out about, uh, word out about our program review even in the newsletter. So we're trying to get that out regularly to inform people that this is what we're offering. For example, our 160 is a dual credit. Uh, we're getting information out about our program review to all uh, parents, stakeholders, and also our students to talk to them about it. This is a new process. It's taken us, it's taken us probably about two or three months to develop this. Uh, again, those are some questions. Uh, as far as program review, this is 23% of our overall. This is the largest part of our index review. Okay. Um, those are two areas that, that deal with it. There's four more, and, and you know, someday I'm sure that we'll be back to talk more about that. Any questions? I joke about that, but uh, the work, the reason why, one of the reasons why the benefit that you are receiving this information, two parts here. One, our whole goal from kindergarten to graduation is to prepare kids for college and career ready. And so when you see kindergarten teachers or even our Head Start teachers or, or bus drivers, or cooks, whatever it is, we're all here preparing you. You're, we're here to prepare our kids from the earliest time that they come into our campus until they leave and beyond is for college and career readiness. So when we look at a kindergarten or a fifth grader, we have to see a graduate. And so the benefit to the board we hope to convey to you is the importance of our measurements. So if we have 150 uh, uh, seniors, and when you come in here, you're going to see these posters on the boards, and you're going to see it, how it's going up. You need to know how many of our students are college career ready. That's, that's how we're measured. 
are we preparing our kids? There's an incredible amount of data uh, that will indicate and test. I just now counted. There's 27 categories on measurements. 27 categories of measurements for our kids for college career readiness. And something like this, is I don't think this really does justice to the complexity that our teachers go through every day to get our kids college career ready. Uh, so teaches hard work, it's not getting any easier. The second benefit I believe you're going to get from this information is that when you are advocating for uh, the students of uh, Martin County, but not only the students, but the faculty and staff of uh, Martin County, you know how incredibly difficult education is and how challenging it is. And when our state legislatures and our feds start cutting our funds, that cuts things like this. That makes our job even more difficult. And when you're uh, Kentucky School Board Association, you're going to hear a lot about uh, the assessments that our students are taking every day. Uh, I believe that it, it, there are a great many benefits that far outweigh uh, the time that is consumed on these uh, assessments. But we have to prepare our kids for college career readiness. And the board needs to know if our kids are ready. If they're on track for success in the fifth grade, are they on track from kindergarten? Are they on track in the ninth grade? The board needs to know that. You need to know. And we need to take, that's how you take action with a sense of urgency to improve instruction so that we can prepare our kids for success. And I know you're going to get that through these. Ms. Williams, thank you, Dr. Fletcher. Also make copies for uh, your audience tonight if you all would like to take one. I'm talking about the ILP tonight, the individual learning plan. Uh, since 2002, it's been a high school requirement that students have to have an individual learning plan before it was called an individual graduation plan at that time, uh, before they could graduate. Uh, in 2006, they came out with technology, a web-enabled plan. And uh, if you look at the handout that I gave you, this best explains, I think, what it provides for our students. Uh, it incorporates results, education plans, outcomes, student needs, academic and career interests, support for successful transition and readiness for post-secondary learning opportunities and work. And you heard Dr. Fletcher talk about college and career readiness. The ILP is so supports that and encourages their students. When I taught health sciences, I had so many students that came into my classroom and wanted to be a doctor. They had no idea, many of them, that science and math is a vital component to in order to be successful in that, or that they were going to have to go to school for a minimum of 12 years and then do a residency and everything. The ILP does just that. It informs students of that. The best part about the ILP, we're talking about funding being an issue, it's free. It is totally free, or it's web-based. It is accessible to any student, any parent, any teacher, advisor, or whatever every, at any time. And students are given a, a login and a password, and they can work on it at home. Our goal is for this not to be a compliance issue, but this to be utilized to its fullest extent so students can have the opportunity to plan for careers and, and look at their career pathway and know from year to year where they are, where they're going, and what they need to get there. If you'll just look at some of the things that they can do, uh, their career goals, their education goals. Of course, uh, it's tied into infinite campus and career cruising, it updates it weekly. So their most current assessments are there. Personal growth, awards, recognition. Michaela, tomorrow you need to scan in uh, your recognition and it needs to go into your ILP. Today I helped Cecil read. Cecil developed a poster for us, uh, Mr. Baldrige, that you printed on a uh, positive behavior intervention system. He did a, a beautiful design. Uh, Mr. Dolls was going through and reviewing his ILP with him to, to finish completion. I said, Cecil, we need to put this in your ILP. They can upload awards. They can, if there's enough memory, they can even do a video. Uh, if, you know, it's, uh, they're involved with drama or singing or whatever, they can upload that. 
and later give other people access. They can complete college applications. They can apply for scholarships, and I've really uh, sold that with their seniors. Uh, there's just so many things that they can do. You know, I think it's underutilized. It is available for students from sixth through twelfth grade, and even thereafter. After students graduate, they can come back and they can, with their passwords, they can access that. They can update any information. It has a resume builder in it, so they can print out a resume, including everything. Uh, so what we're doing here in the district. Uh, Sheldon Clark, the ATC, uh, the middle school, all has each developed an individual implementation plan to assure that these students are using the, uh, this tremendous tool for uh, career planning, you know, and all of everything that uh, it has available to it. We're using it to promote college and career readiness. And it has not only for our students, but for our teachers. It has tremendous lesson plans in there that utilize the ILP and uh, has the new Common Core standards for pretty well all the content areas. In fact, I think it is all the, of the content, content areas. Uh, you heard Mr. Fletcher talking about program review. The ILP is a vital component of program review. And I feel like uh, with the, what we're doing this year, if that will really boost our scores with that because we are going to be able to show how we are implement, implementing that. Uh, operation preparation. Uh, I think Mrs. James is, is uh, overseeing that. That occurs every March. I think we set our window for March the 10th through the 21st. We get businesses, education, uh, the community involved in coming in, reviewing, sitting down individually with their 8th and 10th graders and reviewing their ILP and saying, okay, okay, let's look at your interest. Are you on target to uh, do what you're planning? You know, are you reaching your goals and all of that? So that's a great opportunity. We always already have the commitment of KCTCS. Uh, she said, just let us know when you need us, and I'll bring my staff. So we're going to have a, a, a large uh, commitment from post-secondary. And that's great because, you know, they can really give these kids some good advice. Uh, we have some great training set up. Uh, last fall, I had all of my teachers do webinars on the ILP because I feel like, you know, we just, it's such a great tool and it's free and, and you know, we need to use it. Um, so this year I have had them implement it. Anytime they have any free time, their substitute folders are to contain lesson plans that uses the ILP. They have all their students' passwords. And I have to brag on them a little bit. I have Ms. Sloan and Mr. Jude here. Uh, since I was talking about uh, the status of it tonight, I went in and I looked at, I had set up advising groups with all my teachers, and I have every student they have in classes in their groups. And it looked as though most of my teachers had, and I know Mr. Jude and Ms. Sloan had as well, uh, their students were right at 82% completion, which all they liked was their final review. And actually, I think Mr. Dollars was in there doing that this afternoon with his. So I appreciate the fact that they really got on board with it. But we do have some good training uh, set up for next week. Um, this fall KD or this spring uh, KD is offering uh, both webinars and in-person training. It just so happens there's one next Thursday in Prestonsburg. Dr. Fletcher and three people or two other staff members are attending. I'm attending. I have another teacher attending. And then we have Mr. Fitch and uh, Mr. Green from the middle school that will be participating in that. And, and reviewing the agenda, I went through pretty well the same thing this past summer, and it's wonderful. It's all hands-on. We're getting to do just exactly what the kids do. And uh, so I think this is just a wonderful tool that uh, we will see more and more used uh, in the upcoming years. Any questions, y'all, about like this? Okay, thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Kirk? Uh -huh. uh, just wanted to talk to you briefly about a grant that we're applying for. There is a Read to Achieve grant that is available. It's due, um, the deadline to have it to KDE is February the 3rd. All three of our elementary schools are applying. 
Uh, currently, we have a program through Read to Achieve at Inez Elementary and Warfield Elementary. That grant expires this year, so they are reapplying. Eden was participating in reading first, so they didn't have, they weren't offered that application years ago. So they are applying now. So all three of our elementary schools are applying. It is a $48,500 award uh, per year for two years. And if you show improvement, then you have the option to reapply for the third year. And it's basically an intensive intervention for our primary students, focusing on K-1, one-on-one -on -one, um, instruction, no more than four students in a small group if they have a literacy circle. And the um, model that we've used in the past and the one that the teachers are looking at that we're applying for this year is called Reading Recovery. Um, they, the funding would pay part for their salary, it would pay for their training and materials. We've had success with it in the past and that's why the two schools have highly recommended it and then Eden is on board. We've had, um, during our snow days, there have been two day trainings and hazard. We sent a team of four to those two days and they were actually out there again today. And then yesterday we worked tirelessly from eight o'clock to four o'clock on the grant uh, because it is, like I said, it's due early and uh, it takes a lot of eyes to look at it. You know how very particular they are with margins and uh, and so forth. So uh, just wanted to bring you up to date on that. When the grant is finished, we will bring it before you all to, uh, I guess you will put it. But for your information. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I do have some information for them as well. This afternoon we had um, a representative come to talk to several of our staff members about the National Board Certification Program. And um, we had, I believe, eight interested teachers here this evening. One is renewing her certification. After 10 years, you have to renew the National Board Certification. And the other seven are interested in applying and going through the program. Very excited to see them. It was a wide range from elementary to high school teachers. Uh, there was some discussion, I think, in the past about maybe some uh, assistance with the funding. <laughs> and so that was one of the things that the teachers kept asking me about. I asked them to stay for the board meeting, but they left that up to me. Okay, there was a fifth grade teacher not for board for the elementary right? Yes. yes, yes, we have several teachers in the district that are National Board certified and then we have, like I said, eight that are interested in pursuing it as of right now. Board, please uh, take a look at the material that uh, Ms. Kirk gave you because I will, we will be coming back with a proposal on how we can support. This is professional development. It is an incredibly rigorous and challenging opportunity for our teachers to become better educators and uh, it can be quite lengthy and it's, it's very intensive and it's not just the individual teacher but it takes a school to support, the leadership to support that teacher because it's a lot of work, a lot of work. Uh, so please uh, familiarize yourself with that. It will be brought back at the end of the probably send some correspondence uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks. So we have some funding sources if you <laughs> Uh, lastly, uh, we also want to uh, let you know that Mr. Haney. Yes, please. Well, uh, you had a parent knock. You called him the parent knock. Yes. He's going to send Mr. Fitch. Oh, I'm not here to represent. Is he going to send you to Florida? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to represent Mr. Haney. <laughs> <laughs> represent the school. Our middle school participates in, it's called CT for GC, and you know me, I talk in letters all the time, uh, but it's co-teaching for gap closure is what it stands for, and it's a program that we applied through KDE and we were accepted. We have six teachers that participate, and basically it's a systems approach to collaboration. Special ed teachers are in the regular ed classrooms, um, you don't know no students are identified that are in the GAP population. All teachers are working with all students. It's a great program. Mr. Haney has been really on board with the program. He's, uh, there's also training for uh, the principal as well as I serve as the internal coach. And so we have trainings that we attend. 
uh, the state director called Mr. Haney on one of our snow days and invited him to attend the national conference that uh, we model our program off of. And the uh, author's name is Jim Shipley. And so that conference is in Tampa, Florida. And I believe it's February 3rd through the 5th. And KDE has offered to pick up the tag. So <laughs> I said it's like winning the lottery. <laughs> so, uh, and he couldn't be here tonight to tell you about it, but he's excited about it. It's a great program, and we've seen some good things over there already from this program. Thank you, Ms. Turk. Uh -huh. And the board, if you have an opportunity to send Mr. Hain or anyone else that uh, has presented here tonight, please uh, you know, encourage our folks in what we're doing every day. It goes a long way. It goes a long way. I work very hard. Next time I'm on the gym is Martin County Education Association from the board. And, 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 and school reports, possible administrative discussion. Winding them. Um, <laughs> Well, we're going to move uh, uh, the uh, uh, field to new business under new, bu uh, under new business. Uh, I make a recommendation to the board based on the scholarships that we've talked about uh, and for the audience's uh, information. We have how many, uh, Dr. Fletcher? About 25? Approximately. Approximately 25, 30 local uh, yes. scholarships. Very generous community. Uh, we want to ensure Dr. Fletcher and his the staff, uh, along with uh, Craig Grayson, are uh, ensuring that our scholarships are made available and there's awareness to all of our eligible students, seniors, they all get packets, they all uh, apply to those uh, scholarship opportunities that they're choosing, and there's a great amount of support there, not only for the scholarships, but for their college readiness if they choose to go on. Uh, but in that, as the audience may know, the board is very familiar with uh, the one scholarship, the Tuck Hill Scholarship in question, the instrument that was designed back in 1952 by or 50, wherever it was, uh, by Mr. Tuckio, to offer the scholarships to uh, students of Martin County, was written in such a way that it can no longer be implemented. And so uh, it has to, I, I recommend to the board to follow the advice of counsel of the board attorney to allow him to file suit and litigation so that a judge can determine how we can uh, get that scholarship out to the students this year. Any, any discussion on it from the board? On any motion to approve? Well, are we going to try to find the successor to that's that? What, that's what they'll do. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, as long, yeah, as, long as that's done. I need a motion to approve. Make a motion. Any second? I'll say. Motion second. Not in favor. Okay, so no. Uh, uh, opposed, Mr. Okay, the next item on the agenda is uh, for the board to enter into closed session. Approval um, in, enter into closed session for purpose of personnel litigation pursuant to KRS 61.810. And I need a motion to do that. All right. I'll say motion second. One favor in favor saying aye. Uh, aye. Uh, uh, opposed? Yeah, we'll get to the minute. We'll get to the minute. Okay, I need a motion to approve a closed session. Uh, uh, I'll make that A motion. I'll say motion second. One favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, the item that we discussed uh, in session uh, was appointing or hiring in return for the litigation in this public session. Any further discussion by the board? If not, we need a motion to approve the hiring of Ray Jones. Is that right? I'll make a motion. Uh, Jones. Yeah. Have a motion, need a second. I'll second. Second. All in favor, indicate saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Ray Jones? Yes. Ray Jones. Yes. I'll give you the firm's name and we'll put that in the minutes. Uh, there's no further discussion from the board. I need a motion to adjourn.